you're suffering from dandruff, this is the video for you. We are going deep into dandruff now. We're gonna look at what causes it. We're gonna look at how to prevent it through using certain medications like ketoconazole and zinc. Then at the end of the video, I'm actually gonna share with you our five step method for defeating dandruff. So make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. On this channel, we create tons of science-backed YouTube videos just like this one, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. So let's get into the video on dandruff. With at least 50% of the world's population being affected by dandruff, it's no wonder that so many anti-dandruff products are currently available on the market. From shampoos and conditioners to peels and scalp creams, the treatment of dandruff is a multi-million dollar industry. While everyone is desperate to rid themselves of the white flakes commonly associated with the disorder, those with the susceptibility to hair loss may be dealing it with much more urgency. This is because dandruff can lead to hair thinning and may even cause damage to the hair follicles and hair roots. So what can a dandruff sufferer do to treat the root cause of the condition while simultaneously protecting against hair loss? First, I'm gonna explain what dandruff is, including the main cause and symptoms. Then you're gonna learn of common dandruff treatments on the market from ketoconazole to zinc. Then I'm gonna outline the five steps you need to take to treat the problem while also preventing hair thinning and perhaps even promoting healthy growth. First guys, what is dandruff? Well, dandruff is a scalp condition characterized by white flakes and itching. It's clinically known as pityriasis capitis, and it's a disorder which can negatively impact the lives of sufferers. Not to be confused with seborrheic dermatitis, which is a condition that can affect other areas of the body in addition to the scalp, dandruff is an extremely common condition which affects upwards of 50% of people worldwide. This is a condition known to appear around the pubertal age, though it can extend to 50 years of age and beyond. There is a similar condition which is seen in its infants and known as cradle cap, though it's temporary and typically resolves on its own. So what causes dandruff? While many believe that dandruff is simply a case of dry scalp, the cause goes much deeper than that. According to a 2014 research study, the culprit appears to be a species of fungus known as malassezia. The researchers found that 84% of individuals with clinical dandruff have levels of malassezia present in their scalps. This is in comparison to healthy individuals with only 30% having the fungus present in their scalps. Malassezia is also believed to be the cause of seborrheic dermatitis, a much more serious skin condition, and has also been found to be linked to increased levels of hair fall. So what are the symptoms of dandruff? Well, for those who are suffering from itchy scalp, it may be difficult to distinguish between a general irritation and a clinical diagnosis of dandruff. Here's a list of symptoms which, when combined, may indicate that you suffer from more than just scalp itch. Intense itching, requires, requiring constant scratching, white or yellowish scale flakes around the scalp and shoulders, red patches on the scalp in extreme cases, sore and tingly scalp, scaly rash on the scalp, and additionally, you may feel a tightness or dryness of the scalp, leading to further irritation and itching. And let's have a look at a few of the conditions that are similar to dandruff. Well, aside from seborrheic dermatitis, which is a more severe form of dandruff, there are other scalp conditions which are similar to dandruff. These conditions, however, are not caused by the same mechanisms and therefore require different treatments. One such condition is scalp psoriasis. This is a chronic and immune-related condition which is marked by silvered colouring scaling on the scalp and surrounding areas. Unlike dandruff, which is linked to an overgrowth of fungus, psoriasis is caused by a faulty mechanism which enables skin cells to be produced at an accelerated rate. This leads to rough, thick scales that are dry, itchy and sometimes painful. Seborrheic dermatitis is another condition often mistaken for dandruff and vice versa. As previously stated, the main difference between the two conditions is dandruff is found only on the scalp, while seborrheic dermatitis can be found almost anywhere on the body. However, the other difference is the presentation. According to a 2015 review, seborrheic dermatitis is marked by well-delimited ephthymous plaques with greasy-looking yellowish scales of varying extent. These can be found anywhere that sebaceous glands are present. Interestingly, dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis aren't completely separate conditions. 
Instead, they exist on opposite ends of the spectrum, with dandruff being a mild presentation and seborrheic dermatitis being a severe one. Well, you're probably wondering, is dandruff linked to hair loss? Well, dandruff is not a direct cause of hair loss. Instead, those who suffer from dandruff may experience hair thinning and excessive shedding due to the constant scratching of the scalp. This is because frequent rubbing of the scalp can dislodge hair, especially in individuals who are already susceptible to hair fall. Additionally, as mentioned above, those with a known malassezia infection are more likely to experience some degree of thinning. This isn't a direct result of the fungal infection, but instead a side effect. So let's have a look at some of the common methods for treating dandruff. Well, as dandruff is such a common occurrence, there are a number of treatments which have been scientifically researched over the years. Each of the treatments will vary in its effectiveness and some may also come with less than desirable side effects. First, zinc. Well, zinc, uh, zinc pyrithione is a common ingredient in shampoos and may be successful in the treatment method for those with dandruff. Used in a variety of anti-dandruff shampoos, zinc may also be an anti-androgenetic. In fact, a topical solution of 1% zinc pyrithone was shown to induce hair growth. Even though the results were less than those shown in the minoxidil group, the hair growth was maintained throughout the 26-week study thanks to continued use of the zinc treatment. Also, we've got tar-based shampoos. Now, while not one of the most popular treatments, mainly due to its odour and mess, there uh, have been studies performed which show that tar-based shampoos are just as effective at treating dandruff as other methods such as salicylic acid. One study found that greater than 70% of participants were approving of the results, uh, they say, when treating their dandruff with a cold tar shampoo. And also we got selenium sulfide, which is an ingredient found in popular anti-dandruff shampoos like Head & Shoulders and Selsun Blue. And there's no doubt that selenium sulfide is an effective treatment for dandruff. However, the ingredient has been linked to hair loss, even going as far to damage the roots of the hair. For individuals with androgenetic alopecia or other forms of hair loss, then selenium sulfide is one treatment to be avoided. And then also we've got ketoconazole containing products. Hair products such as a Nisarol shampoo contain the active ingredient ketoconazole. A proven pr uh, promoter of hair growth, ketoconazole has also been shown to reduce the levels of malassezia fungus on the scalp, especially when used in conjunction with zinc pyrithione. And finally, salicylic acid. For more than 2,000 years, salicylic acid has been used to treat a variety of skin disorders. These include acne, scarring and wrinkles, though it's also been proven effective in the treatment of dandruff. Now it's also used in shampoos. So guys, now I'm going to share with you the five-step method to removing dandruff once and for all. Now, as previously discussed, dandruff is not a direct cause of hair loss. However, the constant scratching and overall inflammation can certainly contribute to thinning. Let's look at a few steps to take if you want to prevent hair loss that may occur as a result of dandruff. The first step is to see a doctor. Now, to ensure that you're treating the right problem, it's important to see a doctor and get a diagnosis prior to treatment. As mentioned, there are many numerous conditions similar in appearance and symptoms to dandruff. These include seborrheic dermatitis and scalp psoriasis. But as each of the conditions has a different cause, it's important to know which one is affecting you. Your physician may diagnose you or they may refer you to a dermatologist. They'll perform a physical examination of the scalp and ask you questions such as when the symptoms first appeared and what methods you have tried to treat it. Once dandruff has been diagnosed, they can help you to come up with a successful treatment plan. The next step is to use some medicated shampoos. As dandruff is a fungal issue, you'll likely need to add a medicated shampoo to your hair care routine for at least the present time. This may be one prescribed by your doctor or one that you have found over the counter. It's important to follow your doctor's instructions or the directions on the package. During the first few weeks of treatment, you'll likely need to use the shampoo every time that you wash your hair throughout the week. The amount of times will vary based upon the doctor's recommendations and or the shampoo that you're using. However, once the dandruff is under better control, you may be able to reduce usage to once per week or even once per month. The third step is to moisturize your scalp. Now, when it comes to fighting dandruff, there's no such thing as too much moisture. Moisturization of the scalp is a process that enables you to add oils back to the environment, but even more importantly, keep them trapped within the skin. When you suffer from dandruff, and as you introduce medicated shampoos to your routine, the scalp loses its natural oils at an irregularly fast rate. 
you must moisturize then to preserve the equilibrium and ensure a healthy environment in which your hair can grow. The easiest way to moisturize the scalp is with a carrier oil such as coconut or jojoba. These can be applied directly to the scalp and left in overnight to absorb. This is especially important if you use a particularly drying ingredient in the treatment of your dandruff such as salicylic acid. And the next thing you want to do is avoid overstyling. Gel, mousse, hairspray and heat and these are common tools used in the daily hair care routine. But for someone with an already sensitive scalp, the use of these products can cause further irritation and may even worse the condition. Gels, mousses and hairsprays are very likely to contain alcohols which are obviously incredibly drying. They may also contain ingredients that clog the hair follicles and sweat glands which can cause further issues. Heat styling tools such as curling wands, straightening irons and blow dryers can also dry out the scalp. And inadvertent burns which can sometimes happen when you use a tool that regularly heats to over 300 degrees Fahrenheit may have a difficult time healing if dandruff is already present. And the last thing you want to do is soak up some UV rays. You've heard that unprotected exposure to the sun and its ultraviolet rays can cause premature aging and it may even make you susceptible to skin cancer. Well, a little bit of sun on a regular basis may be just what you need to keep your dandruff under control. You don't want to expose yourself to the sun for long periods of time, but a few minutes every day may be enough to benefit your dandruff. Just be sure to apply sunscreen to your face and body and wear a hat or use an umbrella after your short sun session. Now, while dandruff is not a direct cause of hair loss, it can negatively impact the lives of those affected and make hair fall more likely to occur. This is due to the actions of said sufferers, namely scratching, and can lead to dysplasia of fragile hair. This is why it's important to work with a medical professional and consider all of the treatment options available to you. Do you have any questions about dandruff and how to get rid of your scalp? Then make sure to drop a comment below. That's what we wanted to share with you on dandruff Again, if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.